It's uh, on the surface, it's a 32, it's a 32 Ford, um, full height 32 Ford three window, but uh, and metal body, but really uh, it's quite special because underneath it is uh, a lot of modern technology that you don't normally find in a 32 Ford. The most evident one, really, I guess, when everybody walks up to the car, the most evident uh, difference to uh, normal 32 Ford front suspension is what we call the sin wheel suspension here. And, and this is a, a, a Multimatic uh, patented, uh, a patented product that we're actually developing ultimately. Our hope ultimately is to put that into production vehicles in the future. So historically we've done uh, technology development using our race programs, but we thought we'd do something a little bit different here. Firstly, because in racing we really wouldn't be allowed to do this. And second of all, this is just a great way to showcase it because the way we've set this up, we're trying to invoke the old image of a 32 Ford I-beam front suspension. So if you look at this billet machine part here, uh, we're, what we're trying to show is, is you know, harking back to the 32 Ford I-beam. It's a little bit more high tech than that, but that's kind of what we were looking for. And then out here what you'll see is that all the suspension movement is completely contained inside the diameter of the front wheel. Um, so up to this point, this is the chassis, this is the fixed part of the chassis, nothing moving up to here. Normally you would have a couple of control arms and a spring and a damper that's controlling the motion of the wheel as it goes up and down. Here we don't have any of that. What we've got is a fixed point here and all of this motion occurring with this linear motion device right here that's inside the wheel. And, and really the way this came about was uh, when you look at the motion you need say three inches of bump and two and a half inches of droop travel in a front suspension, historically with a 14 inch wheel or a 15 inch wheel it never occurred to anybody that you could maybe get all that motion inside that wheel diameter. But as we went up and up to 18 and 19 and 20 inch wheels it suddenly sort of became a bit evident that you could potentially get all of the motion inside the wheel. And as soon as you could do that, you could open up a whole lot of other area for packaging. What's really quite novel though is how do we actually spring and damp that. The way we do it is that inside is a piston with hydraulic fluid and we're pumping that hydraulic fluid off of the corner. So here we've got the hydraulic uh, fluid coming off the corner of the car which is holding the wheel up and being pumped into this device here via this, via this line. And the hydraulic fluid is then throttled through this valving assembly and, and in, in here there's a piston that pushes on this spring. So this spring is actually creating a spring rate out at the corner. In fact, if I, if I screw down on this nut, the corner height of the car changes and I can actually change the damping on the car by changing on these valves right here. So this wheel is being controlled by this device in here by a hydraulic fluid coming off that corner and up into this, into this unit. The thing that's less evident is that the car actually has quite a, a sophisticated chassis. So anybody that's kind of familiar with 32 Fords know that the way they were built is they're built around these frame rails that run from the front of the car all the way to the back of the car and up over the rear axle. That's just one continuous metal stamped part and the 32 Ford has always been constructed just off two of those rails with some cross members. If you look at that, the, that frame rail plays a pretty strong role in the, in the styling of the car. So we felt that we needed to retain it because otherwise you lose, you lose the look. So we've retained the classical 32 Ford frame rail, but we've boxed it closed to create a tube basically. And then off of that, we've built a tubular structure using this kind of tubing here with hoops right here at the front of the cowl, right up here in the A pillar, up and around the front, up and around here, up around the B pillar, around the back. And then we've tied them in across the top here with cant rails and across the bottom. And then there's back stays that go all the way to the back of the car. So that by the time you're done, if I were to remove all this steel body, you would see a tubular space frame car which is 
race car technology, the way a NASCAR is built or an old Trans Am car. It has that level of structural integrity. And in fact, we even have a removable system in here so that we can have an upper plane tying where the suspension comes in through this lower rail and this upper rail so that we have a really strong front end. So not only does it make the car stiffer and handle better, it's also extremely safe because I got a roll hoop here and I got a roll hoop here. Guys that have ever rolled a 32 Ford over know that really quite bad things happen when you do. They sort of just kind of fall off the frame. So, you know, I would, I would hate to roll this car over, but I would, feel comf I would feel comfortable rolling that car over. So structurally, it's completely different even though it looks like a standard 32 Ford. And it's made from, from proper steel, steel 32 Ford panels. They're remanufactured. They would fit exactly on a 32 Ford. It's a steel body car it's over a tubular space frame. And that makes it quite considerably different than the average 32 Ford.